Hi and welcome to Unitary Method for Recipes and Best Value. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes chart available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we begin with um, below being a recipe for the Hairy Bikers Spanish Chicken Bake for four people. And we're asked how much of each ingredient is needed for one person. Now, the fact that we are asked for one person this is actually the absolute crux of the unitary method it's taking a recipe or a um, or anything to do with a larger number of people and taking it down to a single person a unit and so um, we have uh, for four people it's going to take one uh, medium onion now this is one uh, four people the recipe but we want one person so how would I turn four into one well I would just need to divide by four and so all of these ingredients are going to be divided by four in order to find how much of each is needed for one person so if I take one and I divide it by four well I'm going to get one quarter of an onion and um, one medium red onion well again I had one I'm going to divide it by four so I would need a quarter 500 grams of new potatoes well 500 grams if I want to divide that by four I would half it and half it again so half of 500 is 250, half of 250, well that is 125 grams. We have eight garlic cloves, well that was for four people, so to get it down to one person, we'll divide by four, so eight divided by four is two. It was eight medium tomatoes, so again, eight divided by four is two. 80 grams of chorizo, well 80 divided by four, that's going to be 20 grams. We have eight chicken thighs, so eight divided by four is two. We have one teaspoon of sweet smoked paprika. Well, that one teaspoon is going to be divided by four to give us one quarter of a teaspoon. Um, we have one teaspoon of dried oregano, so the same again. It's going to be one quarter of a teaspoon. And finally, one green pepper. So instead of using a full green pepper, we will use a quarter. We have used the unitary method because we have taken this down to one person's ingredients. Now, in the next one, we have a recipe for 12 cupcakes. But we would like to know how much of each ingredient I would need for 18 cupcakes. Now, again, this is all about turning a, a recipe for 12 into a recipe for 18. But this one... Um, if I wanted to, I could divide it by 12 to begin with, and that would give me one person, uh, one uh, cupcake, and then I could multiply by 18. But also, I could just think about how could I break this down in two steps to turn 12 into 18. And the easiest way here, if I take 12 and I divide it by 2, well, I'll be down to 6. So 12 divided by 2, I would have the recipe for 6 cupcakes. So then if I multiply that by three, I will have the recipe for 18 cupcakes. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to break it down into a recipe for six cupcakes and then build it up to a recipe for 18. And so all I'm going to do is a couple of, um, a little table here. This is for six cupcakes. This is for 18. And so if I want six cupcakes, it takes 260 grams of softened butter for 12 cupcakes, so six of, uh, six of them would be half of that. It would be 130 grams. But then, to make 18, well, I would multiply that by 3, and so it would take 390 grams. The 110 grams of golden caster sugar. Well, if I wanted to turn from 12 into 6 cupcakes, I would need to half that, so it would be 55 grams. But then, if I want to turn that into 18 cupcakes, I would need to multiply by 3. So 50 times 3 is 150, 5 times 3 is 15, so that is 165 grams in total. We need two large eggs for 12 cupcakes. So if I want six cupcakes, that would be half of that. It would be one large egg. But for the 18 cupcakes, it would be three times as many. Therefore, it will be three large eggs. 18 cupcakes it would be two teaspoons of vanilla extract for 12 cupcakes let's take it down for six that will be half of it it'll be one teaspoon but for 18 we need to multiply that by three and so it'll be three 
teaspoons. 110 grams of self-raisin flour. Well, if it was for one, uh, for six cupcakes, we'd be down to 55 grams. And then we build up three lots of that is 165 grams for 18. And finally, we also need 300 grams of icing sugar. Well, if I only wanted to make six cupcakes, it would be half of that, 150 grams. And instead, I want to make 18, so I'm going to multiply by three. And so it would take 450 grams of icing sugar for 18 cupcakes. And so we've dealt with um, with the recipes. Let's think about if we're trying to find the best value. Um, and so in this shop, we can buy tea bags in either a small pack, which is 80 tea bags for £2.10, or a medium pack, which is 150 tea bags for £3.55, or a large pack for 200, uh, 220 tea bags for £5.25. And what we want to do is we want to find out what is the best value. And this is where the unitary method is really at its best, because the unitary method would say, well, how much does one tea bag cost in each case? And so I'm going to just split the page into three, and I'm going to talk about the small packet first. And in the small packet, 80 tea bags is £2.10. So how would I work out what one tea bag on its own costs? Well, the easiest way is that we would divide by 80. If 80 bags cost £2.10, we can divide by 80 and it will tell us what one bag costs. And so all we do is we grab our calculator and type in exactly that. 80, uh, sorry, not 80, £2.10 divided by 80. And we get 21 over 800, which is 0. 0.02625. Now what that is saying is that one tea bag costs zero pounds and around three p. So it's roughly three pence or 2.625p for one bag. In the medium pack, well, it was 150 bags for three pounds 55. And so again, if I want to get one bag, well, I'm going to divide by 150. And so we take the cost, £3.55, and we divide it by 150, and we get 0 0.0236. 0 0.0236. And so that's pounds. And if we want to put that into pence, that would be 2.36 pence per bag. And finally, the large pack, well, that is 220 bags and costing £5.25. Now, again, if I want to use the unitary method, I want to find out what one bag costs on its own. So I'll take the cost of £5.25 and I will divide it by the number of bags that I had, 220. And that will tell me it's 0 0.0238, so 0 0.0238 three eight and six three recurring and that is in pounds so one bag here is costing us two point three eight six three recurring pence so the question is which is the cheapest um, or the best value i should say and the best value is going to be the one where the cost per bag is the lowest so straight away, I can discount the smalls bag because that is 2.6 pence, which is obviously larger than 2.3 and 2.3. So it's not the small bag. But then all we need to do is compare 2.36 with 2.38. Well, this one is clearly the lower price. And therefore, um, 2.36 uh, pence per bag is the best value. And so medium is our best choice. Now, once again, we're looking for uh, which packet is the best value. So in this case, 20 tea biscuits for £1.50 or 24 tea biscuits for £1.80. Now, for this one, um, in terms of the unitary method, we could use the unitary method and find out how much one biscuit costs in each packet. But the other option is that we find the same quantity of each and see what the cost is. And so if we think about the number 20 and the number 24, well, both of those are multiples of four. So in each case, I could actually just work out 
how much does four biscuits cost? Because then I'm comparing the same quantity with each other in both cases. And so in the first box, I had 20 tea biscuits for £1.50. Well, if I want to get four biscuits, well, I'm going to divide by five. And so I'll do the same with the cost. If the cost was £1.50 and I divided it by five, well, £1.50 divided by five would be 30 pence. In terms of the uh, 24 tea biscuits, well, to turn 24 into four, that is dividing by six. So I'll do the same with the price. £1.80 is also going to be divided by six, and that is 0 0.30. So the question is, which is the best value? Well, in both cases, we are actually getting four biscuits for 30 pence, and therefore they are the same. And so we're going to end with the exam question. This one came from the Edexcel paper in June 2018, and it was foundation paper two. And it gives us the ingredients for making 30 biscuits. Um, and Lucas has the following ingredients. He has 900 grams of butter, 1,000 grams of caster sugar, 1,000 grams of plain flour, and 225 grams of chocolate chips. So what is the greatest number of biscuits Lucas can make? You must show your working. Well, with this one, we have to be uh, take into account that he has a limitation on how, me uh, how much ingredients he actually has. And so what we need to do is we need to find out, well, how many sets of 30 biscuits could he make using his ingredients? So he has 900 grams of butter, but it takes 225 grams to make uh, 30 biscuits. So what we need to do is, first of all, we're going to do 900 divided by 225. This will tell me how many sets of biscuits I can make. And so I'll grab my calculator, 900 divided by 225, that comes to four. And so what that is telling me is that with his 900 grams of butter, he should be able to make four sets of 30 biscuits. If we then go to the caster sugar, he has a thousand grams of caster sugar and each batch takes 110 grams. And so if I use that division, 1000 divided by 110, well, I get 9.09 .09 recurring. And so that is saying in terms of his caster sugar, he'll be able to make uh, just over nine uh, sets of 30 biscuits. In terms of the flour, well, it's 275 grams for flour. He has 1,000 grams. So 1,000 divided by 275. Well, that equals 40 over 11, which is 3.63 recurring. And so that is saying that he can make just under four full sets of biscuits. And then finally, we have the chocolate chips. It's 75 grams for a portion of 30 biscuits. He has 225 grams. And so if we divide those two, 225 divided by 75, well, that equals three. Now, that is saying that he can make three portions of biscuits with his chocolate chips. Now, what we are looking for is the maximum that he can make. And it actually goes a little bit against our uh, a little bit against our natural instincts here. The maximum he can make is actually three sets of biscuits because he doesn't have enough chocolate chips to make any more than three. And so that is actually the maximum number of sets. Now, the idea here, it actually asked, what is the greatest number of biscuits Lucas can make? Well, he can make three sets of biscuits but each of those sets has 30 biscuits in it. So three times 30 is 90. The maximum is 90 biscuits.